I see in the notes here uh, that you at least say that nothing that has transpired in the Chinese regulatory intervention we've seen has blindsided us much, uh, given it's been openly discussed over the last few years. If that's the case, then why have the stocks reacted the way they have, at least previously, uh, if we could fully expect sort of what's been uh, unfolding? I think a lot of public market investors are sitting in New York and London and don't pay t enough attention to what's going on on the ground in China. Don't listen to the rhetoric uh, from regulators uh, or even from these companies on their earnings calls when they forecast these types of developments, um, be it uh, from regulators or, or, or the broader competitive landscape. And so, as we know, there's a huge psychological impact to the public markets and ultimately um, people who are not on the ground here uh, get surprised. Yeah. You know, what I continue to hear from investors is they just want to have an understanding as to when when this comes to an end or when the playing field has sort of been set by the Chinese regulators. Um, you know, you claim or say that this regulation is not haphazard. So when do you expect that we will actually know sort of what to expect in terms of the regulations that are being put in place? So I don't think there's necessarily going to be an end game, a moment where we say, OK, Finn, this is this is done. Uh, but I think based on the frameworks that, that we've provided, you can anticipate which sectors are going to see sustained interference. So if you are involved in something that would be defined as a vice, uh, be that, you know, de and destabilizing society, be that creating inequity in education uh, or uh, sapping the time of, of consumer Internet users, uh, engaging in predatory lending, those types of sectors are going to see sustained regulatory involvement, and there's not necessarily ever going to be an end game. Uh, if you are in a sector like healthcare, core technology, enterprise, uh, those sectors were untouched by regulators and we think will go on indefinitely with limited intervention. Hans, I want to bring you into the conversation because there have been a variety of investors out there who have said that given all of the uncertainty out there with regard to regulation uh, and various clampdowns, especially as it pertains to the technology sector, that China remains essentially uninvestable at this point in time until there is more clarity. Uh, do you agree with that notion? And if there is opportunity, where is it? Yeah, I think uh, we actually feel more comfortable uh, uh, compared to, to a couple of months ago uh, in terms of the uh, risk level. I think uh, for the past couple of months, we, uh, the China government put out uh, some of notice about the update on uh, the data security law, the personal uh, information protection law, and then even recently we have seen uh, the guidelines for uh, recommendation uh, algorithm uh, for internet company and also the, the gaming new rule as such. So, I think uh, we have seen more and more clear direction uh, in terms of the new uh, regulatory environment. Uh, while there might be some uncertainty uh, in terms of how to implement right, and, and also uh, in terms of the, the potential impact of, uh, from a uh, financial perspective after these, uh, the new rule uh, the, the, uh, uh, put in um, to a work. So, but, but again, I think uh, we, we actually feel like more and more investors start to figure out like uh, whether what's the fundamental uh, going forward and under a new regulatory environment. And then I think people have more input uh, in terms of the, uh, the investment here. And then uh, we do see uh, variation wise is also sometimes a lot. And I think that's much more attractive in terms of risk reward.